Shockwave began its life as VideoWorks under Macromind, a Chicago-based company in 1985 as a Macintosh-based program. It served animations for the black and white screens of the first models of the Macintosh. While primitive, it did its job well, and as such, Macromind made a second version in 1987, renaming the product to Director 1.0 a short time later. This new version integrated paint capabilities from other programs. Version 2 of Director would follow in 1989, introducing the Lingo scripting language, an object-oriented language that allowed for interactive elements, similar to Apple's own HyperCard at the time, as well as X-Objects, a crucial part of the Lingo language. Afterwards, Director 3.0, released in the early 90s, added color support and extensions for Lingo, along with a Windows release. Shortly after, Macromind merged with Paracomp in 1991, and then with Authorware in 1992, all to form the unified company of Macromedia in late 1992 to early 1993. By this point, the multimedia industry was beginning to take off, with Director being a key program in its rise. Many prominent point-and-click CD-ROM adventure games used Director, such as the Journeyman Project and Total Distortion. It gained popularity from its extensibility and ease of use, along with its dual platform support. Even internationally, the software sold well, with Japanese artist Osamo Sato using Director for Eastern Mind, The Lost Souls of Tong Now. Later in 1994, Macromedia saw the rise of the internet providing huge potential for interactive content, and so did Microsoft around this time. As a result, the two parties tried their hands at collaborating with an authoring platform known as Blackbird, an alternative to HTML rendering. The plan was for this to serve as a media-oriented web page design, as HTML scripting functionalities were not easily visible yet. Unfortunately, the partnership fell apart when web pages overwhelmingly used HTML, but the work Macromedia did for Blackbird would be recycled for the very first release of Shockwave, a Netscape-based plugin released in 1995. This plugin could play DCR files made in Macromedia Director, now on version 4, on a browser, after being compressed using their Afterburner program. While initial adoption was low, Intel would be a prominent early adopter of the Shockwave technology for their 25th anniversary of the microprocessor website in 1996, as would the game Garfield, Lasagna from Heaven that same year, becoming one of the earliest known web games to exist. Later that year, Shockwave and Director 5 would be released, introducing third-party plugin support known as the Extras, which allowed for more file support, desktop manipulations, PDF support, and other things. With capabilities like these, Shockwave remained a popular application for web apps in the late 90s. In December 1996, Acromedia acquired rival FutureWave systems for their competing Flash product integrating that program into the Macromedia portfolio. At first, Flash was seen as less of a deal than Director and Shockwave were due to its then lesser capabilities, and as such the team was bigger on the latter two products. Shockwave and Director 6 released in 1997, introducing the SWA audio format, a spin-off of the rising MP3 format with new headers, along with greater extra integrations and QuickTime 3 and Flash 2 support, with a minor upgrade of 6.5 releasing in 1998, integrating more extras. By this time, many websites were using Shockwave for interactive content, and Director continued to be a multimedia market darling. This was the final version based on the old VideoWorks codebase. Version 7, released in November 1998, marked a major turning point for Shockwave serving as a massive rewrite of the rendering engines. This rewrite turned off some developers from the product, but was a big leap forward in terms of technology. By this point, Cartoon Network was interested in using Shockwave for some of its games, starting with its game Scrappy Stinks in 1999, which would expand rapidly across its show's websites in the late 90s and into the early 2000s. Thanks to Shockwave's advanced capabilities, more complex web games used that plugin compared to the lighter weight and less capable Flash. 
However, Flash began to gain on Shockwave's popularity and capability starting in 1999 and 2000, thanks to a smaller footprint important in the days before broadband, and bundle deals, with some of the Shockwave team being moved to Flash. Regardless, the next version came out in 2000, serving as a minor upgrade from version 7 with Flash 5 integration. However, the incremental update in 2001, 8.5, added far more capabilities, most prominently 3D and Havoc physics support, along with real-time video and audio streaming, thanks to support for Intel's 3D technologies. This gave Shockwave a large feature boost from Flash at the time, and prominent portals of Shockwave content, such as Miniclip and Shockwave.com, showcased these 3D environments extensively. In addition, Major websites like PBS Kids and Nickelodeon use Shockwave, in addition to Flash, for its games relating to their shows, as well as continuing partner Cartoon Network. Shockwave was definitely no slouch by this point, with 200 million downloads by the end of 2001. The next year marked a major version, 9.0 aka MX, now featuring Mac OS X support and enhanced server capabilities along with new debugging and accessibility features. Some viral hits like FFX Runner, which even received an HD remaster, spreaded around this time. Unfortunately for Shockwave, Flash was rapidly overtaking it in terms of popularity, thanks to its expanding feature set, smaller footprint, and fall of the multimedia market around this time, in favor of web applications, of which Flash remained a universal tool for. Despite this, some sites continued to use both, with Director and Shockwave 10 arriving in 2004. This version featured enhanced DVD-ROM support, along with more enhancements of the interface, and was the last version to support the classic macOS, a platform supported since the original VideoWorks program. By this point, however, much of the attention went to Flash at Macromedia leaving Director and Shockwave in the dust with a skeleton team compared to Flash. Adobe acquired Macromedia in December 2005, making Director and Shockwave Adobe products in the process. Adobe would ignore these products for some time, focusing on Flash instead as their golden boy product for web applications. However, in March 2008, a new version would finally be released from Adobe, adding numerous enhancements to Shockwave such as PhysX support, 3D enhancements to DirectX 9, and integrations to various media players, along with Intel Mac support. Developers largely ignored this version, however, due to minimal changes in its scripting language, as it significantly shrunk in market share from its early 2000s peak can attest to. Incremental updates for Director and Shockwave 11 arrived from 2009 to 2011, adding 5.1 surround audio support, H.264 video playback, enhanced audio mixing, and new importing options, before a true version 12 arrived in February 2013. This version supported exporting to iOS applications and featured other improvements bringing it in line to the standards of a proper 2010s application. However, Shockwave's market share never recovered being relegated to life support by Adobe once Flash became the new standard of the internet's content in the mid-2000s onward. Flash's own fall in popularity around this time helped to seal the final nail in the coffin for Shockwave, with Director first getting discontinued in March 2017 after only minor updates across four years, along with all macOS support, followed by Shockwave itself getting the axe in April 2019 for Windows after over 30 years and three companies. Shockwave, despite failing to leap forward from Flash in its later years thanks to new management, was no doubt a highly ambitious interactive program that served its users very well and remains a backbone on the legacy of interactive content on the internet.